Aloha and welcome to our next episode of Aloha Authentic with Kamakapili, Hawaii's only TV show where we feature our own local artisans, our own kupuna, our own cultural practitioners to share their story and their messages with you in the comfort of your home, either on your television or with the technology today, with your phones and your iPads right in your face. So make sure you keep tuned in because today is a really interesting conversation with our very special guest, the name same of mine, Kamaka Kehau <laughs> Fernandez, and I'm super stoked to be able to bring him in and talk story. But before we get to that, we want to make sure we follow our protocol and I want to kind of get this done as soon as possible because every single episode we always are cut short on our own delicious conversation. So, Keeping with protocol, and we invite you, get your poi, and get your poke, and have a sat and, and delight yourself while we are delighting in our conversation. But of course, the mo'olelo to the open bowl of poi is Tutu always said, when the bowl of poi is open on the dinner table, no negativity is spoken, only messages and stories of positivity and creation, because all that bad mana, that bad energy that you speak of, will get sucked into the poi, and will sour it in a in a, the sour that the kupuna don't even like. You know, there's good sour, mm. and then there's just ugh, sour. So we don't want the ugh, sour. <laughs> so make, make sure it. that that's why our um, bowl of poi is open on the table. So we invite you to get yours. But before we get to our conversation, of course, we have our little did you know segment. So for this month, we're gonna change it up just a bit and put the spotlight on our ali'i, or our past Hawaiian royals. And for this month, because this will be airing in March, we wanna bring attention and awareness to Prince Jonah Kuhio Kalaniana Ole Piikoi. Now, Prince Kuhio is born on March 26th, 1871. So March 26th, this month, uh, yeah, this month is gonna be, I'm not too sure what that comes out to, but it will be his birthday. And we wanna bring honor to him because Prince Kuhio, in my mind, was a man before his time. He was one, his auntie was Queen Liliu Kalani, and he was actually supposed to be next, uh, the heir to the throne after Queen Liliu, however things had changed when the American government had overthrown our kingdom. And Prince Kuhio came from that kind of side of the spectrum to being a proud American in the U.S. Congress. He was the second delegate to the U.S. Congress from Hawaii, a full-blooded Hawaiian in the United States Congress standing up and voicing the, uh, the voice of the Hawaiian people. Um, with all of that, in, in that time, he was also the person who established what we know today as Hawaiian homelands, which dedicated about 200,000 acres of land for the native Hawaiians to get our people back on the Aina. So, mahalo nui, and he's a very, very prominent ali'i in our society and in our community, and we just want to be able to say his name and bring homage to him. So, with that being said, there's so much onalicious poi on the table yes. and words to be spoken, so let's just get straight into it. First of all, mahalo nui oh, for, mahalo. for coming on. I mahalo really appreciate it. Um, but where I mean, we all know you to have this beautiful falsetto voice. But before we get to that, can you kind of build us a picture of where, what your background is and where you came from and how you got into music? Okay. Uh, well, I was born in Little Rock, Arkansas. And um, through the efforts of, well, you know, first of all, it started with Aloha mm -hmm. um, from the very beginning. My mother, who is from Maui, um, and father from Lanai, um, they both decided that they wanted to have a child. And um, unfortunately, my mother couldn't have ch children naturally, so her, her next step was uh, to adopt. She just wanted to mm -hmm. love a child and, and be able to, to provide a home. Um, and so, yeah, I was born in Little Rock, and, and a prayer group from, from Maui had raised funds to send my makuahine up to Arkansas, and she didn't know who she was getting. She, mm -hmm. she really didn't care. Um, but um, what, by the time she got there to Arkansas, there I was, and before you know it, I was on a plane home to Maui. Mm -hmm. um, and since I've been living there, um, her siblings were actually uh, teachers of the Kula Kayapuni, the Hawaiian mm -hmm. Language Immersion School. Um, and so all of their children, my cousins, were all enrolled in the immersion. Um, and she wanted that same opportunity for me. And, and fortunately, um, you know, you, you didn't have to be Hawaiian to, to be in Kula Kayapuni. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the beginning of where the language came in. Uh, at further on throughout my life, um, I got involved with canoe paddling and um, I think that really uh, opened up more of a, a cultural aspect as well um, for just learning my surroundings mm -hmm. and where I went. Yes. So when did music come into play and how did you 
step into that realm. Yeah. Um, well, when you're in Kulakai Puni, we're singing 24 mm. 7. <laughs> It's uh, from Punanaleo to, to Kulakai Puni, uh, kindergarten and on. We're, we're always singing, paying honor, whether it be uh, Mele uh, Ho'ola Aina, uh, Kana'io Puni, you know, those kind of mm -hmm. Mele. Um, because within the song, it teaches us lessons and, yeah. and all of that. So um, that's where I was introduced to music. Now, and then next comes when I started playing ukulele, and that was in fifth grade. After fifth grade, I stopped playing music, period. I, I, it wasn't really a strong iini or desire mm -hmm. for me to to want to perpetuate music. Mm -hmm. And then I got to high school, and they started, you know, back then it was brown bags, and it's mm -hmm. got changed to StarQuest and so on. Yeah. Um, but I had uh, been, I don't know, I mean, music, music was always there. Um, but once I found out you could actually enter and, and show off your skills, I guess. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, it wasn't it's different until from singing in the shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, that was in high school, actually. So um, in 2000, and this was 2002, so I consider myself, especially for falsetto, um, maybe, maybe not. Some may have another opinion, but uh, I personally thought singing falsetto at 2000, in 2002 was kind of late. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, usually you, you start, start off early when you're involved in music. Um, so that happened, the school competitions, and then 2003 came along. This is my senior year. And uh, I did try for Frank Bichainer's falsetto contest, didn't get that one. But then the next year, um, which then became 2003, Uncle Richard Ho'opi'i. They said, mm -hmm. you know what, we gotta have one from Maui. Uh, Auntie Eleka Ipaleka was like, we have, uh, from KPOA, mm -hmm. was like, we gotta um, do something for Maui. We have a legend, legendary falsetto singer on Maui, we gotta do it. We have Clyde Kidney Sprout on Big Island, Frank B. Shaner on Oahu, why not Richard Ho'opi'i? So. That's how it started. Yeah. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. So, the Ri Richard Ho'opi'i started there, I think this was the s second annual, uh, first annual, sorry, and um, and yeah, after winning that competition, the rest became history. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and furthermore, the more the the reaction that I got from singing, you know, of course, the number one thing, and I always put you know put that call out the elephant in the room. <laughs> I am Popolo, <laughs> um, African American from uh, Little Rock, Arkansas. But because of all of this, the journey of, of, of culture and, and aloha, um, I realized how important it is for me to, to continue and perpetuate it, not just music, but it's, it's the language you're hearing in the music. Mm -hmm. so, so since you, you know, brought that up and, and on that point, what has been you, the reaction of people hmm. being a Popolo person? with a beautiful Hawaiian voice, <laughs> even then or, or well, even till the today? The first thing is like they got a, they, their, their reaction is like, wait a minute, <laughs> is that really coming out of him? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've seen jaws <laughs> drop and eyes get wide, um, but, you know, it, it, it's always humbling when you have kupuna come up to you and, and be like, right on, boy, you know, mm -hmm. right on, mahalo. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Many reactions. Oh, you you know more Hawaiian better than me. And this, you know, all kind of, you know. But this that proves this that you know Hawaiian is not necessarily just the quantum, but it's the energy and the mana that you carry and the intention Polo that you hold. Polo awesome. Day. So in this competition, what what is was there a, a certain song that you had to sing? Uh, yeah, I I chose to sing uh, Heui, a song composed by Danny Kuana, and it has a lot of kauna in it, uh, hidden. Mo'olelo story mm -hmm. behind it, which um, you know we hear the flower and and um, you know the beauty and all of that stuff. Where mm -hmm. he was describing the beauty of his woman and and the flower. Mm -hmm. So um, we've heard this this mele heui heui no oikei ke mai. You know, we just the traditional style, but I, I really went the kind of jazz up. <laughs> <laughs> and fortunately, I didn't do it alone. I had help from uh, one of my teachers, Kumupula Macaulay. Um, a f fun, 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 one of my 
favorite teachers. <laughs> oh, wait, the rest might get <laughs> Wait, I thought we were the favorite. Oops. Oops. <laughs> um, but uh, she, she was musically inclined because mm -hmm. she's the sister of uh, um, the group Lavaia, an old, mm -hmm. old time group. Um, so anyway, sh uh, she had helped me compose that. And we really got into the counter where I was doing some ummies and, <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. So it, it was pretty fun. <laughs> and how was the, the judge's reaction to that? Well, <laughs> that year, um, on the, the panel of judges, I believe was Brickwood Galateria, um, Pueo Pata, um, of course, uh, Flip McDermott was there, and, and Teacher Noah Keabe, mm -hmm. and, um, oh, and Hulu Lindsay, mm -hmm. Hulu Lindsay. Um, so after we took photos and all, and Teacher Noah, I, I got to stand next to her when we took pictures, and she's like, boy, that was good, but not that great. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh. What are you supposed to say Okay, after that? <laughs> you know, boom, right down. Yeah, you win an award, and boom, you're brought right back down to reality. Yeah, but it, <laughs> it was humbling. You know, all I could be was like, mahalo. You mm -hmm. know, it was a great constructive criticism. And I understood later why she said that. You know, I had to, of course, you know, explain that to my mother and, and my uncles. And, and, you know, there's, there's, certain traditions and protocols mm -hmm. and you know and and to maybe my pitch was off or something I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not sure but um at that time you know that's the way i looked at it was that you know there's certain generations that they have the tradition and the sound that they they like to hear yeah. you know so so in your opinion and for those musicians upcoming musicians and those who are just you know great prospectors or, or mm -hmm. audience members where is in your opinion the line between keeping traditional music traditional but also being who you are in this contemporary world and evolve it mm. into something a little bit more contemporary without crossing the line yeah well the question the question is well yeah what is traditional mm -hmm. yeah i mean um when you think about it you know our ali'i have traveled you know they 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 learn what they learn here in hawaii and then they 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 take it on with them and they travel around the world and, mm -hmm. and try to gain more mana'o and insight from different places. So mm -hmm. I think tradition is always evolving. Mm -hmm. I, or, or the way that we, we, we do things is always evolving. Um, as far as a traditional Hawaiian sound, um, you, listen to the old Skahawanu Lake Trio. Mm -hmm. Um, Richard Ho'opi'i, um, Auntie Genoa, Auntie Genoa I mean, Keave, yeah. you know, um, but I'm, I'm a kind of artist that actually I, I like to test the boundaries, mm -hmm. you know, I like to test the boundaries and I like to be original because as it already is, I'm very different. <laughs> um, <laughs> if you didn't so, catch that already. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think maybe the tradition is, is just simply the language, you know, the language still remains. So with that being said, you have to do your avina, you have to do your homework by listening and if you want to sing songs that have already been composed by people then the right manao is to research you know do your homework figure out how the song is actually sung and, and figure out the manao behind the song and you know prime example with Hei, you know we I we knew how the melody was supposed to be um, but we got a little bit more creative by mm -hmm. giving it our own you know mm -hmm. kaila in a way so with you and in listening to your music, I mean, your music is definitely not strictly traditional. Um, mm -hmm. What other, you know, following and, and being inspired from falsetto legends, what other genres of music are you inspired by? Oh, man. Um, Stevie Wonder. Um, I, I love neo-soul music, which mm -hmm. would be the uh, music soul child, Erica Badu. Mm -hmm. um, that that's, would be my generation. <laughs> Uh, um, Beyonce. <laughs> so do you incorporate all those like pieces of a puzzle to your puzzle when you do your music? I think it's beginning to 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 form that way, yeah. Because mm -hmm. I mean, I, as as artists, we're always we're always looking for different inspirations, and we hear certain beats from different people, and um, you know, it ends up becoming part of our our style, you know, mm -hmm. or developing our style. So do you, are you working on 
you know, whatever project you're working on, is there a song or something or, or example that you can share with us of giving a little bit mm. of a Kamaka Kehau Fernandez flavor to oh. Hawaiian music? Oh, no, I'm glad you asked. Cause <laughs> I, I actually do. Um, recently, so <coughs> I actually was very inspired by uh, Pilahi Paki who made that um, the the affirmation of what aloha really is mm -hmm. and you're breaking it down to you know the a being akahai the l being lokahi olu olu ha'a ha'a and ahonui mm -hmm. and when she presented this um, it was to encourage her people to 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 live this way and this is the way of hawaii this is the way of hawaii's people um, and so uh, I'm usually always in my studio, my favorite studio, which is the bathroom. I'm sure all of us can agree. Yeah, uh, we the sing our hearts. Is awesome! Oh, it's amazing. <laughs> There's miracles. So, and 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 better yet, you're getting cleansed while you're doing it. So all that ike just came right over. So I'm gonna have some fun with this, and and this song that's gonna be coming out soon is called the Aloha Groove, and it basically, you know. Um, there's some noises here, but I don't know if it's going to work. This is it. E hoko koke mai, i ka pau ka ni mele, e luana e nanea, i ka ole, lo o ka aina, i ka ole, lo o ka aina. He panna panna, he panna panna. My ukulele likes to sing to it. He panna panna. Iku upu uvai, hey, kupuna, kupuna, kupuna. So it's kind of like a, it's not your typical reggae, <laughs> but you know, That's, it's, I feel, so I hear jazz, I hear blues. Yeah. But the cool thing is, it's all in Olalo Hawaii. Yeah. So I've never heard of a, a song. And so the whole thing is all percussions? It's all the drums? The whole thing of, yeah, is, is all percussions. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and some bass. I can catch the so, groovy part to it. Oh, yeah. I'm so excited to see what that sounds like <laughs> when it comes out as a final product. Yeah, yeah, I'm pretty stoked right about on. it. Yeah. Okay, well, you know, uh, with that, Olelo Hawaii being kind of the center, especially for you, you know, um, from listening to your story, coming from the Kayapuna community. So being a person submerged in the Hawaiian community, the Hawaiian language community, but now you're also a kumu with Punana Leo with a little keiki, speaking and teaching Hawaiian language. What is what would be your um, perspective or your answer to why is it important to learn Hawaiian language, but also apply Hawaiian language and practice it? Yeah. Um, well, the importance uh, of Hawaiian language um, is because it is the language of Hawaii. Um, you know, it goes without saying, and, and it's you know cannot be denied. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and and when you are able to have the privilege to learn this language, then the idea is to, to keep it going and keep it thriving. Mm -hmm. So the only way that that's gonna happen is when you involve yourself around events maybe that have Ole Lo Hawaii um, and, just, and just keeping it alive that way. Um, personally, I've um, taken the next step as to, so I teach at Punanaleo, um, and I also teach my own classes to Makua mm -hmm. um, outside and into the community. And it, it, you know, it stemmed from me wanting to actually start an online thing, but uh, especially for those who live on the mainland, mm -hmm. you know, there's plenty of families that have moved away from Hawaii for whatever reason, and they're missing their, con their Hawaii connection. Yep. And I was like, oh, how can I be? You know, music is one thing. I get to travel there and share, you know, the music with them, also language. Mm -hmm. Um, but how can they, you know, have something that they can continue yeah. and that they can awamo, mm -hmm. you know, to take on that responsibility of, of keeping Hawaii, Hawaii's name alive and mm -hmm. through language. So mm -hmm. um, then I was like, well, let me just go ahead and start over here in, in, <laughs> in home, you know, at our, in our own backyard. And um, where do you see ho uh, Hawaiian language with our keiki when you were a keiki and with the keiki now? Where do I, where, as far as it, like the, how, how it's grown? Yeah, how, how has yeah, it grown? Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, this is um, my favorite thing. Like when I go to Bangkok, Hawaii, 
I choose, I select the Ola Lohavai <laughs> on Bank of Hawaii. That's, that's great that you mm -hmm. can have, you know, something that is, you know, a, a bank, you know, uh, things around the world, but you can actually have one in Hawaiian language and you can write checks in Hawaiian language. So Hawaiian language is actually one of the official languages of Hawaii, correct? Absolutely. Right. So yes. anything like the banks, you should be able to do what you do in English mm -hmm. in Hawaiian. Yeah. Awesome. So, you know, with that, and that kind of brings us back a couple months ago where we had this incident on the island of Maui mm. where Hawaiian language was spoken in the courtroom, but the judge was not just not acknowledging that, but was ignoring that, which yeah. to me is two separate things. Ignoring it is way worse than not acknowledging it. So with, with the, you know, the government, I guess, with Hawaii and, and the majority of us who speak English, um, and then you, you look at Facebook and that whole thing was going on and you read people's comments of people from outside of Hawaii and a lot of people are saying you guys are taking over by America you guys should be speaking Hawaiian uh, speaking English because that's that's the, our primary language on this stuff but you who teach Keiki who are pushing in your face to not be afraid of who you are to don't be ashamed of your voice and to speak mm -hmm. to live the words of your kupuna what would be your response to those people who are saying you should be speaking English not Hawaiian uh, well, my our thing for for our keiki is is basically for them to understand who who they are, where they come from, or what they and what they're surrounded by. Um, you know, Hawaii's culture, you know, is a beautiful thing, and and jeez, um, <laughs> I never really thought about <laughs> about this, but. Um, I mean, my my response. I mean, we were out there. You know, we were out there on that day, mm -hmm. and 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 you know, singing our hearts out and and acknowledging the fact that this is this is a language that we should have the right to speak, especially in our own place. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and also though, I mean, they're little kids, but in, in addition to this, is you know, always always be educated in everything, yeah. you know, Hawaiian language and English. And I yes, think our Ali'i were perfect examples of that, like yeah. Princess Ruth Ke'eli Kolani, who was the one to put her foot down and be like, I'm Hawaiian, this is my land, you want to talk to me, you got to learn Hawaiian to speak to me or you find yourself a translator to come speak to me. Yeah. Oh. So I think that, that's, a, that's a great response and because and even, you know, the leadership today, mm -hmm. I look at the leaderships today and the leadership of our kupuna or of our Ali'i, there's a dramatic difference <laughs> and you know as the audience yeah. looking I, I don't understand where that dramatic difference comes from but mm. to know that our Ali'i had done it and our community and our people and our kingdom was successful if it could happen then it could happen now we just have to kind of and I, I mahalo you for taking the kuleana to teach our keiki because bruh I can talk to the keiki and <laughs> I'm like I didn't know that or I don't understand mm. what you're saying it's like the keiki teach me more you know oh, and yes. I learned and Hawaiian for what eight years and I have a hard time grasping yeah and you know that's one thing uh, we learn in the in, in Punanaleo as well is that don't just think you are the only one that can teach the mm. keiki the keiki will definitely teach you something too mm. and, and you got to make sure that we listen mm. you know because um, they have a different view um, I was going to say something else, but we're, we're no, that's all good because <laughs> I look at the clock and we're at four minutes. My oh gosh, my. we had so much onalicious things to talk about, but you know, closing out this episode, and I ask everybody this, but I think your position with being a kumu to keiki is is a good one for this question. Mm -hmm. Is if you were to answer the question to your keiki, what does aloha mean to you? What w what would you tell them? Aloha to me. Uh, is is I would tell them exactly what um, Tutu Pilahi Paki has has already you mm -hmm. know placed before us um, to to be humble to be unpretentious work together um, and and have patience for for prosperity but always 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 keep learning mm -hmm. yeah and and along that journey you know keep yourself pono. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Auntie Pilahi Paki has been a, a great inspiration because the messages, and if you have never seen, just Google Auntie Pilahi Paki and, and see, or even more so, have you, did you know that the Aloha Spirit Law that is derived from Auntie Pilahi Paki is an actual law yes. within the state of Hawaii? And I think if you go, go Google Statute 5-7.5, that's the Aloha Spirit Law. So go Google it because, you know, for a kupuna to take something so 
esoteric, so metaphoric, mm -hmm. something so spiritual. Yes. And in, uh, include it within our state government, within our statutes. I mean, just that alone is just like, that's so unique. And, and aloha must be something on a pedestal if it's that important to put into our our law but at the same time we need to remember that because I think a lot of us we don't know that it's a law let alone yes. we don't practice aloha every day as we should yeah but we're gonna keep going on and on in this conversation but we better <laughs> end it off now before we get cut off in the middle of our words so I just want to mahalo you mahalo nui for for tuning in uh, for being in and we have um, social media tuning in now so we're gonna be getting at that but Mahalo Nui for you guys for tuning in as we continue our fourth season and listening to the words of all our guests. But Kamaka Kehau has such a unique position when it comes to music, but also Olelo Hawaii, which I think a lot of us need to be more surrounded with. And this is just our kuleana and our due diligence to be able to share that. So we just ask you, keep tuning in every month. This episode and all episodes airs the first Friday of every month at 6.30 p.m. on Olelo Channel 53. And then it will replay itself every Saturday except the fifth Saturday, if there's a fifth Saturday in the month. It will replay, same channel, but 10.30 a.m. in the morning. You can catch all our past episodes as well on alohaauthentic.org. And new thing, if you haven't caught it yet, make sure you tune in every Thursday morning. We have our new weekly segment on KHON 2's Morning News Take 2 show. 8.40 every Thursday, we'll be sharing a little bit of street names and Ahupua'a and Moku and Olelo Hawaii and different educational snippets that is perfect for your attention span. <laughs> so make sure you do that. And that as well, if you missed anything, go to alohaauthentic.org to catch that. So with that, we want to mahalo you. Make sure you're tuning in next month. And last but not least, I wanted to say a big mahalo to the artist Asia Gamble for giving us our newest and most updated jingle. So if you go back to the beginning, you hear the beautiful slacky music as the title page fades its way into the cameras. That's from Asia Gamble. So check her out more too. She has a beautiful voice and a beautiful talent. So mahalo nui. See you next month. And until then, ahui ho. Aloha. <laughs>